So let me get this straight. <laughs> Donald Trump ditched the 60 Minutes interview because he didn't want to be fact checked. That's that's the bottom line. He didn't want to be fact checked, but gave all of these other crazy reasons. He skipped the interview with 60 Minutes to go to his safe space and his safe people, Fox News and Laura Ingram, only for Laura Ingram to turn around and fact check him. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel Tabitha Speaks Politics and yes, we are still on the road to 500,000 subscribers. So if you've come across this video and are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and help me to reach my next goal. We talk all things politics over here by way of viral political news stories and yes, one of the reasons why Donald Trump refused or dropped out of doing the interview with 60 Minutes is because he didn't want to be fact checked. How do I know that? Because the, the journalist that was going to interview him over on Fox News did this whole little introduction, if you will, to the interview that they did with Kamala Harris. See, it's supposed to be a dual type thing. You know, an interviewer does an interview with with Kamala Harris and the other interviewer is to do an interview with the other person in the campaign, which would be Donald Trump. Donald Trump dropped out. His interviewer had this to say. It's been a tradition for more than half a century that the major party candidates for president sit down with 60 Minutes in October. In 1968, it was Richard Nixon and Hubert Humphrey. This year, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump accepted our invitation. But unfortunately, last week, Trump canceled. The Trump campaign had told us that the interview would be this past Thursday at Mar-a-Lago. They also asked us whether we would meet 78-year-old Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, where he was grazed in an assassination attempt. We agreed. On September 9th, Trump's communications director, Stephen Chung, sent a text that read, quote, I'm working with our advance team to see logistically if Butler would work in addition to the sit-down. Sit-down meaning the interview in Florida. Days later, Chung called to say, quote, the president said yes. Then, a week ago, Trump backed out. The campaign offered shifting explanations. First, it complained that we would fact-check the interview. We fact-check every story. Later, Trump said he needed an apology for his interview in 2020. Trump claims correspondent Leslie Stahl said in that interview that Hunter Biden's controversial laptop came from Russia. She never said that. Trump has said his opponent doesn't do interviews because she can't handle them. He had previously declined another debate with Harris, so tonight may have been the largest audience for the candidates between now and Election Day. Our questions addressed the economy, immigration, reproductive rights, and the wars in the Middle East and Europe. Both campaigns understood this special would go ahead if either candidate backed out. And so there you have it. And given that all Donald Trump does is lie, whatever excuses, explanations, reasons that he and his campaign come out with, I don't believe it. I believe the man from 60 Minutes and what he says and why he says Donald Trump dropped out of the interview with 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like I said, he went over to his safe space, Fox News, and he did an interview with Laura Ingram. And during that interview, 
Laura Ingram did her journalistic responsibility. And that is the basics of journalism, which is providing the facts to the American people. Donald Trump tried to lie as he has been doing for the past week about that $750 initial payment from FEMA to those citizens who were affected by Hurricane Helene. He tried to bring that lie on or into this interview with Laura Ingram. And Laura Ingram fact check him. Very concerned about that. So we're into almost $300 billion for Ukraine, and yet they're offering people $750. For immediate needs. For the worst, yeah. yeah but now, for those of you who don't understand how FEMA works and have been blessed to not have to deal with FEMA as a result of natural disasters like hurricanes or tornadoes or severe flooding, those types of things. FEMA, when you have catastrophic, catastrophic events like Hurricane Helene or Hurricane Katrina or any of the other hurricanes that the United States people have had to deal with over the years. FEMA provides you with an initial cash payment. I've had to deal with FEMA where I received an initial cash payment. For the victims of Hurricane Helene, that is $750. That $750 is to help your current emergent basic needs. Um, food, gas, formula, diapers, you need a hotel stay, you whatever. Your immediate emergent needs water whatever and then if you need beyond that a lot of times people just need that seven hundred and fifty dollars because i don't know their electricity went out and the food went bad in their freezer and they need to replenish the stock in their freezer or they ran out of water and they need to get more water or they, they're fine, but their electricity is out and they've got family that they can quickly travel over to and they use that money for gas. That's your immediate needs. If you need anything beyond that, then you get escalated to the next step. Hurricane damage, tree fell on your house. You need to put, bring somebody in to, to cut up that tree. You need to have some roof repairs. Yeah, that's to the next step. And then it escalates. Some people lose everything. Okay, and so that's how FEMA works. You get escalated to different levels based on your needs. But that $750, a lot of people get that from the initial. Now, the only reason that I know of that you don't get that initial $750 is because you owe the government in some way, shape or form. I've also been denied that initial payment because I owed the government. I was on an installment plan to pay back my taxes. So they snatched up that $750. There are reasons as to why you get denied that $750, but it is minimal. A lot of people from the, from the jump, Get that $750. Now, um, for those who have no electricity, there are other ways for you to apply to get that $750. You can call in to a number. Sometimes they have stations set up in the hardest hit areas. Yeah, 
Sometimes they have FEMA workers going from location to location, neighborhood to neighborhood. So all of the lies that the Donald Trump and the MAGA nuts have been spreading about this $750 and the hurricane response, it's just that. It's what they have been doing for years. It's lies. All they do is a lie and their lies stir up anger within the community. It hurts the people within the community who have been the hardest hit and need the most help. You've got female workers that are having to deal with angry MAGA nut supporters who are putting out threats on social media. So now you've got FEMA workers who are worried about being attacked physically by crazy ass MAGA nut supporters. This is Donald Trump. This is who su supports him. When I say elections have consequences, elections have consequences. I am so sick of these MAGA nut bullies, liars, chaos demons, detractors, obstructionists, the list goes on and on. But the interview doesn't stop there. Donald Trump goes on to try to insinuate that Kamala Harris is not on the ground. She doesn't care about the people on the ground. And Laura Ingram, fact checks him on that. Here's what she had to say about him attempting to say that Kamala Harris was not on the ground. Worst hurricane that anybody's seen, uh, but she shouldn't be there anyway. She should be, I would say that North Carolina is, bad, is so bad. And she, she was there today there. for three hours, I believe, uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> She was here earlier today for about three, three hours. That's what Laura Ingram said. There's pictures of, of Kamala Harris on the ground talking to those who have been most affected, hugging and loving on those that have been most affected, listening to the stories of those who have lost everything. Kamala Harris is on the ground. Now, originally, when the storm first hit, President Biden nor Kamala Harris were on the ground because people in the area, they need to be able to be taken care of by those of state government, city government. They need to be focused on by your state and local leaders. They need to get in to assess the damage. They need to get in to clear the roadway. Emergency personnel, emergency medical personnel needs to be able to get through to those individuals who need medical assistance. And if you have the president of the United States, the vice president of the United States, a lot of the resources that are used to tend to the people are taking away are taken away in order to deal with the president of the United States and the vice president. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden understand that. Donald Trump does not. Donald Trump is a self-serving fool. So what does he do? He doesn't care about the people on the ground who needs all of these resources. He doesn't care about them. So he jumped up on his private jet and went down for a photo opportunity to say, hey, everybody, look, see, I'm here. I'm here. And what do what do law enforcement have to do? Law enforcement has to make plans to be wherever Donald Trump is in order to provide extra protection for him. What do road work crews have to do? They have to clear a path for Donald Trump instead of clearing pathways in the neighborhoods, instead of clearing trees off of power lines. Everybody has to stop to attend to the needs of Donald Trump because he is a former president of the United States. And the final point of this interview that I want to share with you 
Laura Ingram tried to throw a softball to Donald Trump and wanted to give him the opportunity to clarify some of his I am your retribution statements or I'll be a dictator on day one statements or, um, you know, I'm going to arrest my political enemies statements. She tried to give him an opportunity to clean that up and Donald Trump just couldn't do it. Take a listen. How will you restore faith in our justice system? A lot of people will say, well, he's just going to do to them what he, they did to him well, and get back people, at them. Yeah, and, yeah. and, they're, a, and A lot of people say that's what should happen. Well, you want to know the but, truth. But, right. <laughs> well, but I think, I mean, but I think you, know, you know, punitively using government institutions is what got us in this mess in the first place. And, and my, our town hall that we did back in February, one of the lines that really resonated, I think, with people is when you said, my revenge is going to be my success. Yeah, well, I do believe that. But I will say this. They have started a terrible precedent. We've never had this. We do have that in third world countries, banana republics, a lot in South America where they go after somebody politically that's an opponent. We never had it to any great extent, really almost at all. But you're not going to do that. When you get in office, you're going to look at all your political enemies. No, I want to make this the most successful country in the world. That's what I want to do. Listen, Donald Trump is who he is. I don't care how many softballs they try to throw to him. I don't care how they try to sane wash his statements all across news media. When you see Donald Trump in all of these different clips floating around on social media, he is who he is. Believe him when he says, I am your retribution. Believe him when he says that I will be a dictator. Believe him when he says that he is going to deport 10 million immigrants from this country. Believe him when he says that he will get rid of Obamacare. Believe him when he says that he will get rid of entitlement programs, which is code word for Social Security and Medicare. Believe him when he says that he will arrest his political opponents. Believe him when he says that he will indemnify the police. Believe him when he says that he will get rid of the Department of Education and the Department of the, um, the Environmental Protection Agency. Believe him when he says he's going to get rid of those. Believe him when he says that he's going to remove all of the deep fake or bad actors in government. Because he has plans to bring in Trump loyalists. Believe him when he says all of these things. Believe him. And then vote accordingly. Elections have consequences. Make sure you choose wisely.